Welcome to the Inspirational Living Podcast, brought to you in part by Book of Zen, makers of inspirational fashion and gift ideas. Visit them online at bookofzen.com. Today's podcast has been edited and adapted from The Power of Awareness by Neville Goddard, published in 1954. Humanity's chief delusion is its conviction that there are causes other than our own state of consciousness. All that befalls you, all that is done by you, all that comes from you, happens as a result of your state of consciousness. Your consciousness is all that you think and desire and love, all that you believe is true and consent to. That is why a change of consciousness is necessary before you can change your outer world. Rain falls as a result of change in the temperature in the higher regions of the atmosphere. So, in like manner, a change of circumstance happens as a result of a change in your state of consciousness. To be transformed, the whole basis of your thoughts must change. But your thoughts cannot change unless you have new ideas, for you think from your ideas. All transformation begins with an intense, burning desire to be transformed. The first step in the renewing of the mind is desire. You must want to be different and intend to be different before you can begin to change yourself. You must make your future dream a present fact. You do this by assuming the feeling of your wish fulfilled. By desiring to be other than what you are, you can create an ideal of the person you want to be and assume that you are already that person. If this assumption is persisted in until it becomes your dominant feeling, the attainment of your ideal is inevitable. The ideal you hope to achieve is always ready for an incarnation, but unless you yourself offer it human parentage, it is incapable of birth. Therefore your attitude should be one in which having desired to express a higher state, you alone accept the task of incarnating this new and greater value of yourself. In giving birth to your ideal, you must bear in mind that the methods of mental and spiritual knowledge are entirely different. This is a point that is truly understood by probably not more than one person in a million. You know a thing mentally by looking at it from the outside, by comparing it with other things, by analyzing it and defining it, by thinking of it, whereas you can know a thing spiritually only by becoming it, only by thinking from it. You must be the thing itself and not merely talk about it or look at it. You must be like the moth in search of the flame, who spurred on with true desire, plunges at once into the sacred fire, folding its wings within till it becomes one color and one substance with the flame. Just as the moth in its desire to know the flame was willing to destroy itself, so must you in becoming a new person be willing to die to your present self. You must be conscious of being healthy if you are to know what health is. You must be conscious of being secure if you are to know what security is. Therefore, to incarnate a new and greater value of yourself, You must assume that you already are what you want to be, and then live by that faith in this assumption, in confidence that this new value or state of consciousness will become incarnated through your absolute fidelity to the assumption that you are that which you desire to be. This is what wholeness means, what integrity means, They mean submission of the whole self to the feeling of the wish fulfilled, in certainty that that new state of consciousness 
is the renewing of mind which transforms. There is no order in nature corresponding to this willing submission of the self to the ideal beyond the self. Therefore, it is the height of folly to expect the incarnation of a new and greater concept of self to come by a natural evolutionary process. That which requires a state of consciousness to produce its effect obviously cannot be affected without such a state of consciousness. And in your ability to assume the feeling of a greater life, to assume a new concept of yourself, you possess what the rest of nature does not possess, imagination, the instrument by which you create your world. Your imagination is the instrument, the means, whereby your redemption from slavery, sickness, and poverty is affected. If you refuse to assume the responsibility of the incarnation of a new and higher concept of yourself, then you reject the means, the only means, whereby your redemption, that is the attainment of your ideal, can be effected. Imagination is the only redemptive power in the universe. However, your nature is such that it is optional to you whether you remain in your present concept of yourself, a hungry being longing for freedom, health, and security, or choose to become the instrument of your own redemption, imagining yourself as that which you want to be, and thereby satisfying your hunger and redeeming yourself. The drama of life is a psychological one in which all the conditions, circumstances, and events of your life are brought to pass by your assumptions. Since your life is determined by your assumptions, you are forced to recognize the fact that you are either a slave to your assumptions or their master. To become the master of your assumptions is the key to undreamed of freedom and happiness. You can attain this mastery by deliberate conscious control of your imagination. You determine your assumptions in this way. Form a mental image, a picture of the state desired, of the person you want to be. Concentrate your attention upon the feeling that you are already that person. First visualize the picture in your consciousness. Then feel yourself to be in that state as though it actually forms your surrounding world. By your imagination, that which was a mere mental image is changed into a seemingly solid reality. The great secret is a controlled imagination and a well-sustained attention, firmly and repeatedly focused on the object to be accomplished. It cannot be emphasized too much that by creating an ideal within your mental sphere, by assuming that you are already that ideal, you identify yourself with it, and thereby transform yourself into its image. Thinking from the ideal, instead of thinking of the ideal. Every state is already there as mere possibilities, as long as we think of them, but they become overpoweringly real when we think from them. This is what the ancient teachers called subjection to the will of God, or resting in the Lord. And the only true test of resting in the Lord is that all who do rest are inevitably transformed into the image of that in which they rest, thinking from the wish fulfilled. You become according to your resigned will, and your resigned will is your concept of yourself and all that you consent to and accept as true. By assuming the feeling of your wish fulfilled and continuing therein, you take upon yourself the results of that state. Not assuming the feeling of your wish fulfilled, you are forever free of the results. When you understand the redemptive function of the imagination, you hold in your hands the key to the solution of all your problems. Every phase of your life is made by the exercise of your imagination. Determined imagination alone is the means of your progress, 
of the fulfilling of your dreams. It is the beginning and end of all creating. Let me say once again, the great secret is a controlled imagination and a well-sustained attention, firmly and repeatedly focused on the feeling of the wish fulfilled, until it fills the mind and crowds all other ideas out of consciousness. What greater gifts could be given you than to be told the truth that will set you free? And the truth that sets you free is that you can experience in imagination what you desire to experience in reality. And by maintaining this experience in imagination, your desire will become an actuality. You are limited only by your uncontrolled imagination and lack of attention to the feeling of your wish fulfilled. When the imagination is not controlled and the attention not steadied on the feeling of the wish fulfilled, then no amount of prayer or piety or invocation will produce the desired effect. When you can call up at will whatsoever image you please, when the forms of your imagination are as vivid to you as the forms of nature, you are the master of your fate. You must stop spending your thoughts, your time, and your money. Everything in life must be an investment, and that investment begins with your attention. Attention is forceful in proportion to the narrowness of its focus. That is, when it is obsessed with a single idea or a sensation, it is steadied and powerfully focused only by such an adjustment of the mind as permits you to see one thing only, for you steady the attention and increase its power by confining it. The desire which realizes itself is always a desire upon which attention is exclusively concentrated, for an idea is endowed with power only in proportion to the degree of attention fixed on it. Concentrated observation is the attentive attitude directed from some specific end. The attentive attitude involves selection, for when you pay attention, it signifies that you have decided to focus your attention on one object or state rather than on another. Therefore, when you know what you want, you must deliberately focus your attention on the feeling of your wish fulfilled until that feeling fills the mind and crowds out all other ideas from your consciousness. The power of attention is the measure of your inner force. Concentrated observation of one thing shuts out other things and causes them to disappear. The secret of success is to focus your attention on the feeling of the wish fulfilled without permitting any distraction. All progress depends on an increase of attention. The ideas which compel you to action are those which dominate the consciousness, those which possess the attention. The idea which excludes all others from the field of attention fuels the action. To the unenlightened person this will seem to be all fantasy, yet all progress comes from those who do not take the accepted view nor accept the world as it is. As was stated heretofore, if you can imagine what you please, and if the forms of your thought are as vivid as the forms of nature, you are, by virtue of the power of your imagination, master of your fate. Your imagination is you yourself, and the world as your imagination sees is the real world. When you set out to master the movements of your attention, which must be done if you would successfully alter the course of observed events, you realize how little control you currently exercise over your imagination, and how much of it is dominated by sensory impressions and by a drifting on the tides of idle moods. To help you master control of your attention, practice this exercise. Night after night, just before you drift off to sleep, strive to hold your attention on the activities of the day in reverse order. Focus your attention on the last thing you did, that is, getting into bed, 
and then move it backward in time over the events until you reach the first event of the day, getting out of bed. This is no easy exercise, but just as specific exercises greatly help in developing specific muscles, this will greatly help in developing the muscle of your attention. Your attention must be developed, controlled, and concentrated in order to successfully change your concept of yourself and thereby change your future. Imagination is able to do anything, but only according to the internal direction of your attention. If you persist night after night, sooner or later you will awaken in yourself a center of power and become conscious of your greater self, the real you. Attention is developed by repeated exercise or habit. Through habit an action becomes easier, and so, in the course of time, gives rise to a faculty which then can be put to higher uses. When you attain control of the internal direction of your attention, you will no longer stand in shallow water, but will launch out into the deep of life. You will walk in the assumption of the wish fulfilled, is on a foundation more solid even than earth. The Inspirational Living Podcast is a production of The Living Hour. For free transcripts of our podcast, please go to livinghour.org. If you enjoy our podcast, please consider becoming a patron. You can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month, which will ensure that we can continue our podcast for years to come. To become a patron, please visit patreon.com. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com. Simply do a quick search for the Inspirational Living Podcast at patreon.com to find our Patreon page and learn more, including the free gifts we offer to every patron. Subscribe to our free podcast today at the iTunes Store, or at Google Play, or at Stitcher.com. Thank you for listening. We look forward to being with you next time.